go. Hi, welcome to Wednesday with White Gecko Craft Lounge. Um, we're doing Shadow Quilt today. Um, I love this one. Uh, I like the illusion. I like illusion looking quilts. I like the idea of it, it all. Um, somebody put up on one of the, oh, I think it was the June, June Taylor um, put up on Instagram. Uh, a maze quilt that somebody had made using the um, the strip strip uh, shape and cut um, brilliant it looked really cool I'd love to make one of those um, but before we start uh, mini block swap are you interested um, we thought we'd do a thing where you make a small piece into a coaster or um, a a mini drawstring bag or something like that um, just uh, we'll set a size I don't know um, this is around the wrong way for me isn't it um, I don't know a six six by four or five by seven or something like that um, size uh, a mini one you email your address and and whether you're interested to us and then we'll like put you all in a hat and draw you out um, a bit like Secret Santa so then you would get your little mini thing come through the post uh, so if you're interested in that let us know um, and if you're interested in doing a mystery block a uh, mystery quilt um, also let us know uh, let us know in the comments or email us uh, it, it's another thing to play with um, and just before I came over, we started to talk about the Zoom classes again. Um, March looks as if it's going to calm down a little bit for us. So um, we can go back to putting slotting in Zoom classes into uh, everything. So um, we'll be sending out a list of those soon. What else was there? Oh, batiks. How could I forget the batiks? These have come through. Um we uh this one we've had a, of of a type before um because it always sells really well um a nice rainbow uh i love this for um going inside bags and things like that i like that pop of color i mean it's got nearly all the colors in there and you know i like all the colors um we had like a camo one as well um so that one uh, in the greens and browns so that would do for a uh, a pond or trees or anything like that if you're doing a collage that would be lovely for that um, and it, it's more male orientated than uh, a lot of our choices because this one's not male orientated either it's just another spectrum of a rainbow Guess who chooses all the uh, all the boutiques? That would be me. So um, that's uh, the three that have come through today. There is more fabric there, um, but I'll we'll do that one tomorrow. Okay, there's another box of fabric, so we'll do that one tomorrow. Okay, who am I talking to? We got Alex today. I'm sharing them out. So we've had Drew. Josh and now Alex today. Uh, so we got hellos from Nikki, Linda, and Catherine, uh, Jenny, Carol, Pamela, Heather, a bunch of people there. Hi, hi, bunch of people. Um, right, shadow quilt. As you can see, it's perfect for a charm, uh, charm pack. If not. Um, you could do it with a layer cake. If you wanted to do a double quilt, then a layer cake, it would work as well with that. You could do a bigger shadow. And depending on how you turn your quilt would depend on um, uh, where the sun is, really, for your shadow. Now, I put mine onto a picnic blanket um, because I wanted it to be that waterproof. So I had a a uh, picnic blanket that somebody was throwing out um, or I bought from a cheap shop or whatever. So I made my quilt to fit the blanket. Um, 
I quilted it on there and I've just done straight line quilting. I wanted to do as little quilting on it as possible. Um, and uh, so I've got a picnic blanket in my favourite colours. So in order to do that, I've used, uh, I used a charm pack. No, I didn't. <laughs> I used my stash. There's enough in there. Um, I think these were probably five inch squares. Yeah, they're probably just from everything. Uh, I went looking yesterday through my stash. I just wanted some scraps and I found these. Okay, so these are just ones that I thought tonally they went okay together. Um, and I cut three of each. I'm just going to do like a nine patch. So I've done one. And as you can see, even with just doing the three like that it's already you can see the um the shadow effect if you can't squint a little bit like that at it and um and, and it works a lot better um so we're going to make another one of those but in a different order so i need to put that so i can see it i want to put it in a different order so how do we start you start with your five inch square so you have a five inch square like that. You cut out of your shadow fabric. Now, I used um, black spray time because that was what I had in the drawer. But I always think a shadow is never quite black, black. My mother, my mother used a beautiful Japanese um, uh, uh, charm pack. And the predominant color that went through it was like a, um, a raspberry a light raspberry pink so she, her sashing was pink and then her um uh what the, the shadow huh. how many times have i said shadow today her shadow was then a darker tone of the pink and that looked really good because it um you you're doing the shadow that goes with that color so I think on this one, yeah, I've used grey. I've used a grey linen texture. The spray time works really well because it's mottled and shadows are never, I, I don't think of them as black, black. Not unless you've got a black heart. So, stop waffling, Sarah, go for it. You're going to cut a four inch strip from your uh, shadow fabric and a five inch strip okay um of your shadow fabric and you're going to cut a one inch one and a half inch from your background okay so i've used a, a white spot here so i've i've cut the white spot in the one and a half all right and you're going to sew them together so you're going to sew them together so that they do that so that they look like guinness okay and then, so you want to cut both of those, you go um, cut them down into one and a half inch strips, okay, like that. Now, in my head yesterday, I sewed on all these things. I didn't compute in my head that I was doing a nine patch. So I needed nine of these, and as you can see, so then when I went to cut my five and a half, five inch strip, I didn't have any fabric left. So keep an eye on that, work out how many you need really. So we're going to cut the one and a half. So I'm going to cut off the edge here. Now you know to line up one of your um, inch lines with a uh, Probably the best one to line it up with would be your sewn, uh, your sewn line here. You're going to line one of your thick lines up and then line your one and a half up going down. Got a rough estimate. Of course I'm doing this sat down. And I think I need one two, three, one, two, three. 
and eat three. So I've done all of this for three. Um, so I think I might have to just keep going and make it into a quilt. If I make a quilt because I've got all these uh, pieces left over now. So there's my three. So you're going to take your four inch strip. Sorry, Alex. Okay. You're going to take a four inch um, with your one and a half inch and you're going to, I mean, they're both, both the five and the four are um, cut at one and a half inch. Put it on your left hand square going up. What? A thing just popped up saying trying to reconnect. Oh, is everybody on the thing? Are we, oh, uh, are we back? I don't know. It seems to be the message went away. It popped up for like two seconds or something. Is anybody talking? Anything uh, popping up? People are saying lost you. Oh, back now. No, we're back now. So, directional, left hand side. Um, you want to put your um, your highlight at the top. Then when you put your five and a half inch, no, five, five inch with your one and a half inch highlight on the top, you want to put it along the bottom, okay? And you want your, the black to meet. Now you have to cut it longer because we've added to the, um, added to your five inch square with the, the extra bit. So it needs to be that bit longer. Okay, so I've got three of these I'm going to sew. Yes. Um, so over to the sewing machine. Now you know about sewing to the, the dark side, don't you? Uh, no, not sewing, um, ironing. Yeah, iron to the dark side. Um, so I've done that. Uh, with all of mine, I've sewn the uh, the ironed the white towards the. Sorry, my brain has just gone pickled. Then, sewing you you iron it towards the dark side. So again, on the if you come down here, Al. Okay, so you've got your your five inch square, five inch square. You've put your four with your one and a half against the left hand side and then you're going to put this so that it lines up like that. Okay, that might be a bit more clearer than uh, before. So I'm just going to pop that under. I'm chain piecing because I it's all the same. You can, set, you can do all your cutting and set it all up. So that you're, um, you just sew all one side, then all the other side. It is a really quick way of doing quite an effective quilt. Are there any questions or anything so far? Uh, Leslie says, how wide is the black strip? Wide is what? How wide? Yeah. Um, you want to uh, cut from your your uh, width of fabric, you want a four inch strip and a five inch strip. Then the highlight, you want a one and a half inch strip. And you're going to sew it along like that. Okay. Anything else? Um. This iron gets very hot on the top. Anne says I'd be up for the block pattern share too. Cool. I don't know what that means. Um, there's a lot, a lot of comments about the uh, when it was freezing up. Oh right. Um, we'll go back over the comments, and I'm sure Sarah's there anyway. Right. Okay. So I've got another three done. Okay, you then want a width of fabric 
by two, I think it is. Yep, yeah, by two. Okay. And you're going to put them in between. So on your uh, on two of them, you want to sew it onto the right hand side as you're looking at it. Okay, so it's here and here. The other two for me, I'm going to put a um, a border round it so that will all come in to the border. Okay, so we got that. So we had it that way round on that one. So I'm just going to swap that one, that one, that one. And look at that. You know that don't do it the wrong way. I've done it the wrong way. No, I haven't. I've done it the right way. Ignore me. I was putting it down your way, not my way. There we go. Right. So I'm going to sew this two inch there. And I'm going to put another one there so that it, um, it then will uh, go in between, which is helpful for our um, illusion effect. So did you see yesterday, did you see Beth doing um, the crochet yesterday? I know Alex was probably riveted to it. No. Um, she did really well. And a beautiful stitch, um, the basket weave. I thought that worked really well. So can I fit that one? I'm just going to add this to my long piece. Um, you can measure and cut each one down, by all means. But it's a bit like, you know, the cheats log cabin that Sarah does. It's a bit like that. Okay. What are we doing tomorrow? Oh, we're doing blind hem tomorrow. Um... So we'll uh, have to have a look at that. There we go. So I'm gonna put that on there. Yeah, I've I've missed a I've missed a, a step. I've missed a very important step. As opposed to um, what's the word? Square them up. So, which one do I go? There we are. Right, before you put the white bit on, you've got to square them up. You've got to square them up to five and three quarters. Very odd size. Now, I worked it out. I'm going to stand up for this. Right, are they in the right place? If I do it in right yeah, in the middle, yeah? yeah. yeah. I worked it out that if I squared this black up, to one and a quarter. Um, this? Oh yeah. Put it right in front of me, and I can't see it. Right. If I if I measured this black strip one and a quarter, and just took off, you can see that it's minimum. Look, look, it's tiny, tiny bit. But I figured I needed more in my shadow really the shadow was important to get that all the same than to trim them all off at different widths so i've measured that oh, look at that sewing is perfect right so now i know that this is this should be straight and this should be straight okay illusionally they don't look it so i want five and five and three quarters so I'm going to find my five and three quarters there and put the corner on my corner. I'm going to make sure that it's right there and there. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess. Okay. It's always better to have more to cut off than 
um, than not. So again, one and a quarter. I've lined that up with the edge and then like that. So what have you lot all been working on? I only ever tend to do half a, you know, like little jobs now, um, unless they're for her chanda. Um, so I've got her chanda on the 27th of February. I must have done this one. Look, that's perfect. And I know it shouldn't be. So I must have already have squared that one up. Which one did I do? That one, wasn't it? I might already have squared this one. Let's just do that. Yes, I have. Of course, it would be the two that I don't pick, isn't it? Okay. We'll start again. Where's my two inch? Because I'm going to have to go home and, and unpick that. I'm going to make this now into a, um, a nine patch cushion, I think. Um, I worked out that it should be about the right size. Um, if not, my border is going to be a skinny border. Um, Do you want to drop the thing on top of the oh, sewing machine? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, right, what am I doing? I'm putting that down. And we're going to sew this again. All right. As you can see, it doesn't take that long to sew it. No, don't take your eye off it, sir. Um, that way. So, are there any questions, um, or are they letting me know what they've been doing? Yeah, uh, Carol says working on my snow ladies' embroidery. Yeah. Embroidery. Yeah, I've seen those. They look really good. Uh, Jenny says making a sampler quilt. Leslie oh, says making a birch tree quilt. Oh, birch tree, like Sarah made. Yeah, I covered that up. It was a bit of a shame, but... Um, there was a lot of people saying Beth did really well. She did, didn't she? Uh, Nikki said, finished my wristlets and now making curtains for a customer. Oh, curtains is something... Oh, no, Sarah and I did make curtains. Oh, way before we opened the shop. Um, I wanted... We, we were doing the thing I, we were doing my lounge and I wanted these curtains and I had curtains made um, in silk very very heavy silk um, in lime green and purple just go with me it was they, they looked amazing however I'd asked for a wide stripe wider so um purple on the end then a larger white thing of lime green and then purple on two curtains and it came and it was lime green purple lime green purple lime green purple I thought okay I can live with that it's more work but it was supposed to be um boxed you know pleated in a like a a, a flat bit and then pleats then a flat bit then pleats and they weren't even and we put them up and they looked terrible and I'd, I'd spent a couple of hundred quid on these and um, so in the end we took them I took them back and said these are no good and they didn't have more fabric to remake them um, so I went across the road to the sari shop and bought you know these beautiful brocades and jeweled um, head scarves that they wear I bought uh, two purple and two pink and we made those into the curtains in my in my lounge and I still look at them almost every night and think I love those but my lounge is looking a little bit tired now so we're now going to trim these off okay we're going to uh, make sure that they're straight so you're just going to level that up and trim off these two and I didn't check to see which ones I was putting them on I think I might be all right um, so 
so like that okay so that's one do you know i'm a dilly today proper proper dilly can you find me a um an unpicker please okay which one am i going to take off um, i want to put that one in there that one will go there, so yeah, do need that one off. Right, so you only need to put them on two of these. Okay, so trimming these off. See, I should have done more last night, but I ran out of the fabric, like I say. Um, the plan was that we would, it would almost be put together. Where's your pickers there? I got one. See, I wouldn't look in there at home because mine's long gone from there. I should put one of the others in. So, what else is going on? What, in what the else? comments? Yeah, in the comments. What else has um... everybody been doing? I've seen those snow ladies on um, the gigglers. Is it the like the red worky type things? Um, they look so cool and there's so much detail going into them. Uh, Lucinda said, still sewing my little square together uh, uh, for, oh, my bis for my biscuit quilt. That's like the puffball one, isn't it? Um, somebody was asking about doing one of those the other day um, and I saw a pattern. I mean, that could be a one o'clock, I suppose. We could um, give it a go. Cindy and I can uh, take notes. Right. Okay. So we've now got this on two of them. Should have had the smaller square. Okay. We've got these on two of them. Now we're assuming that those are straight. So we're now going to sew all three together. So we're going to put these that way we do it that way that'll work yeah like that and then that one okay so we're going to sew these together and then we're going to sew it to the other one and then we're done for now So we've been basting quilts today to uh, get them on Daphne. So those of you that are waiting, we're getting there. Um, anything else? Just looking intently at the comments. Yeah. You had a notification on your phone, I was waiting for it to go away, but it just never didn't decide to leave. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't think I put it on silent either. Uh, Anne says, making a baby bag, uh, hopefully. Oh, oh, the baby bag? Yeah. Yes. Hopefully in the last hand stitching now. It's, um, um, it's a beautiful bag when it's done. Now, I don't know whether you want to have a look at the back. <clears throat> because I'm using a pale um, as my highlight and my background, I'm putting all my iron in going inwards, okay? So um, when I'm doing that, I want to lift the part that I'm, I'm ironing towards. You lift that up so that it, you create the, the right angle. And then just sort of press rather than push, just press it. So I'm going that way. Okay, there we go. And again, you've got to square this up. All right, you're just making it straight. You can see there I've got, so you're taking a line. And just picking the line 
that gives you the most straight. There we go. And on to the side too. Now, squaring F is really important. It's something that a lot of us don't do enough of, and that includes me. Um, I mean, I suppose it depends on, on the quilt that you're doing. But if you want it to lie straight for the next bit, you need a straight line to be able to add it. Okay, so I've already put my two inch, I'm using two inches there so it's, it's all even. So I've already put the two inches on the top and the bottom. So this would be my middle piece. Okay, well no it doesn't have to be, it could be either. So I'm going to add this one now, there, okay. So I've got no nesting needed, all I need to do is make sure that I'm lining up, I'm getting it, you know, the um, your tram lines are okay. So I'm just going to put a pin in there. If you then sew with the flat piece, which is your, uh, your joining sashing, if you put that as the piece, um, as a piece underneath, you can keep an eye on which way your, your seams are as you go over them. You can keep an eye, I'm coming over here now. Okay. Go up. Right. So as I come to a seam, fold it down, make sure that it goes under the foot the right way. Keep an eye on what's going on underneath as well. Okay. So are there any any more questions about this? The um, the pattern is available for a digital download at two ninety five or a paper copy at four ninety five on the website. Okay. Um, there was one, but there was one. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Jean said, "Can you quilt uh, as you go with this block?" Um, it depends. It depends on how you're doing a block. Um, I suppose you could, you could, but your sashing then would be smaller, I think. I don't, I don't think this lends itself to quilt as you go, but really you should be able to quilt as you go anything. Um, it would be a brilliant one to practice your quilt as you go because you've got a good square to go and work into and put your a detailed thing in there and then your sashing gives you a good um, a good one to work on um, but I'm not sure how whether you need to do like a thinner sashing whether that would work. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll leave that one for Sarah to answer, I think. Because I have to be honest, I've never quilted as I went. Um, I, it's just something that I've not done. I've not done the type of blocks that would do that. I tend to do ones that become a whole quilt, like the all stacked. I haven't done many quilts, mind at all um i'm a, a yeah i i'm i'm a fiddler i i do quilts i enjoy doing quilts but i'm getting to the stage where i've got enough now so i make them for people as i'm going Ta -da! so you can see that it's starting to can you see that al 
Can you see the? Does it look good on 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 camera? Does it work? Yeah. I'm probably not the person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, why didn't you have girls? Um. So there. That's. And you should have some sort of a um an appreciation for it by now. No. Still not. No kind of, urge to. Can just tune out and read the comments. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's it. I mean, you can see it is so easy. Um, I would say it's beginner friendly. Um, if you know, as long as you read the instructions and go slowly, and you can always give us a ring and we'll talk you through anything on the phone. So that's me today. I'm back tomorrow. I'm going to show you how to do blind hem and how to use the overlocker foot if you've got one. Um, we all go, we need an overlocker, but half these machines now do an overlocker um, thing. It doesn't cut as you go, mind, whereas an overlocker would, would trim. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna go and play with that tomorrow. Any questions before I go?